show you guys, uh, I was supposed to do this video last week, but I just have had no time and literally I just got back from like a lovely Valentine's thing and it was really cool. But now I have time to do a multiband compression uh, video and also some other uses that I use a multiband uh, stock compressor from Ableton for. So the best way I could show this is like I do with most things is just to show you what I do with it on a kick. But uh, this is now not going to be... Uh, this is I don't have an example in this session of a multiband compressor with settings that I use for things, but I'm just gonna quickly give you a quick rundown and kind of explain what I got going on here. So I'm gonna so this is kind of like a two part video because I'm gonna show you how to split uh, any sound into uh, how to split the frequencies, and you can do this with EQs and filters, but it's just easier to do it with a multiband compressor. So the way I split my kicks into uh, my low end of my kicks into mono and then the rest of the other bands like the mid range and the high range um, is uh, I use a multiband compressor to split it all up so you can see that uh, what I did with a multiband compressor I just press command G put in a little group then I uh, went here uh, whoops right here dragged out this section right here the chains input and then I uh, made three copies of this so I just clicked on one, press command D, I named one low, mid, and high. So these are gonna represent my f my frequency ranges, m those bands. So this is the low band, mid, and high. So if you go to the low, you can see I just sold the low uh, band right here in the multiband compressor, and then I set the range. So everything beneath 250 is gonna be in the low range for this band. And then the mid, it'll be the exact same, except I'll be soloed on the mid, and it'll be everything between this range and this range, and then the high range is everything above 1K. So that's how I split up the frequencies, and you can see that on the low range that I have the utility here, and the width is all the way down at zero. So that com so utility turns this signal into a mono signal when this is there. And you can see that on the other, the mid and the high, I don't have that utility there. Um, so those are still, uh, they're not mono, but they're not like full stereo, but they're, well, I guess if it's not mono, it's stereo. So yeah, these are stereo and this is mono. So my low end of my kick is in the center and that allows for those higher frequencies to just, uh, sound much wider. So my kicks sound very big because of just how it's placed in the stereo field. And that's what I do with multiband compressors. You could do this with EQs, filters, but it's just so much easier like that. So that's how you can split the frequency uh, up into different bands, and you can do this on anything. And the thing is, the reason why I'm not using this multiband compressor is because I don't want to have the sound of the compressor uh, splitting up my bands. So uh, you can see I, I didn't do anything to any of these. I just opened up a new one. Uh, I didn't apply any input or output or change the settings here I just let it be and I also to save time because this can take a while maybe like five minutes to do quickly or maybe less than that I mean it just uh, made this whole thing into a Ableton rack so let me see I called it split frequent and these are just quick racks I use uh, for quick things I use over and over again so most of these are things I use all the time and uh, let's see, okay, so now that I've shown you like how to split up frequencies with a multiband compressor, now let's just talk about what it is and how, uh, where everything is inside of this specific multiband compressor. So a multiband compressor is pretty much just a, uh, it's a way to compress different bands uh, slightly uh, differently. So it's very useful and uh, the, the really cool thing is about this one is you can also expand on the sound as well. So it's you can do upward expansion compression, which is pretty much just called an expander. So you can do that as well. And it all starts here. So you, you, prime, you just set your ranges here. And uh, generally, un everything beneath 250 is considered low range or, you know, around there. And I like to just listen to that. And then you have an input so you can increase the signal to uh, you know reach a certain threshold and whatever and the way this whole thing works is that you have your above which is kind of uh, like your typical 
ratio and all that stuff and the level that it exceeds. So you see this box, this is representing the above uh, compression uh, uh, like parameter. So anything that goes into this box, if it's in an upward ratio, then it's going to be compressed. So if it's orange, it's going to be compressed and it works in ratio. So the ratio you kind of have to kind of figure out by listening to it over and over what things are. And when it's blue, that's expanding the sound. So it's not making because uh, compressors push things down and, and like they push the loudest peaks down and actually make the loudest parts quiet and then by doing that the the quieter parts seem louder because it's closer in amplitude to what used to be louder now with expanding that makes the l quieter parts louder but sometimes it also makes the loudest parts even louder so you can kind of figure that out. So uh, if it's, I think, what's the range where it's, if it's at one, I don't, it doesn't do anything. And so let's just leave it on like a, r a small ratio. And then you have the pretty much the, the range or uh, I'm forgetting what this is called. But so what this is, is uh, if you see your signal, probably helps if I'm you know, on the kick, which I was. Let's look at the low, since that's the one we're gonna kind of explain a bit. So if we look at this, you can see the signal is in that region. Now if I had, had the ratio up into the orange, that would have been compression. And uh, you can set this ratio lower if your signal is quiet, but also you can bring up the input to match it on volume. So, you know, you can kind of decide where things start to get compressed and it's just like a compressor in that way then you have the below which is exactly all the same stuff but just down here so really uh, you can kind of compress uh, I don't know I, I don't really find much uses for this unless I'm gonna expand which just makes the quieter parts louder so you know typically you'll see orange and uh, blue on the side and orange on this side but you know uh, you can also compress down there if you want, but you know you have to get more comfortable with multiband compressors before I recommend doing that. And then you just have that for all of the different bands, and then you can adjust the output if one of these are too loud or if you're seeing a little bit of red at the end of this. And uh, let's see, then you have the attack and release. So this is kind of, I guess it kind of went backwards. This is kind of where you would want to start. So you set your, the uh, attack right here and then the release down here. So attack, 50 milliseconds, that might be a little long, too long for a kick. So I might put that down anywhere between one millisecond and 10 milliseconds for, you know, a kick. And then release, you can, uh, I like to kind of put things between 50 to 200 milliseconds for a kick, but sometimes 300 milliseconds is fine. And then you kind of just do this accordingly to each band. And it's very simple. And then you have uh, things like peak and RMS. And peak is just uh, trying to catch the, the highest peaks. And RMS is kind of like the average uh, s uh, volume that's compressing by. And knee is just kind of, uh, I, I want to say, like the slope in which it applies these kind of things, like compression to. So a soft knee would be like a nice curvy not so harsh uh, threshold and a hard and without that it would just be a regular old one and then that's really it and then you have a master output and then you have the amounts you can also you know think of this like a dry wet so down here is completely dry up here is completely wet I don't I've only adjusted this a few times over the last few years to around 50 percent on some things but Typically, you always want it on a 100%, just like you would with an EQ or a compressor that has dry-wet uh, knobs or a mount knobs. You just, uh, you just, there's no point in using that plugin if you're going to only be using half of it. At that point, you might as well be using a bus. So uh, this is kind of my multiband video explanation, and then I kind of showed you how to split up the frequencies. So hopefully this helps you guys, uh, some of you more intermediate advanced users will probably already know most of this but uh, you know I, I try to keep these videos in the wheelhouse of people that ask a lot of questions and I get a lot of questions on 
a lot a ton of different topics but i've gone a few on multi-ban recently so i decided to focus on that so thanks guys like always for watching and late <laughs>